Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. This is part one of a playthrough of Malta Besieged, a solitaire game designed by Steve Carey and published by Worthington Publishing. Now this is a States of Siege game and if you're not sure what those are, basically you have to control certain spaces on the board while the enemy is trying to overrun you and get into those spaces along tracks. And you can see those here moving down towards Malta. That comes all the way around here. And in North Africa, a track ending up at Cairo. So in this game, for instance, you'll be constantly trying to push back the enemy from Malta and from Cairo, while at the same time managing your resources, which are shown on the tracks at the bottom. The engine for this game are three packs of cards, and each pack denotes a different epoch. You have an early, middle, and late epoch, and we'll look at those in a moment, but the setup for the counters is pretty straightforward. All the starting boxes are labeled, and in the first epoch, we're dealing with the Italians. And we have the Italian Navy, and that's their track. We have the Italian Air Force and starting in Tobruk, the Italian Army. So here's the Italian Navy counter and that starts here in Taranto. We have the Italian Air Force, which starts here in Messina. And the Army, which starts in Tobruk. Those three resource tracks have counters. Here's the military counter, and that starts here. The supply counter starts here. And here's the morale here. We've got to keep an eye on these resources because if all those tracks get to zero and stay at zero, at the end of the turn in the housekeeping phase, we have lost. Not only that, but if any of the resources get to zero, there are negative things happening. For instance, the military, if it gets to zero, we can't do things called raids, which we'll see when we get to the second epoch, but we can only attack one front, which is what these tracks are called, or do something called air support, which is involved with uh, convoy battles. If the supply gets to zero, once again, we can't do any raids, but we get a minus one dice roll modifier for all attacks against the fronts. And for the morale, we get a minus one dice roll modifier against actions trying to increase our resources. So not good. However, if the military and the morale get to the other end, they get a bonus. And the bonus for the military is shown on the back we receive one free raid action or a fortification reroll per turn. All this will become clear, I hope, as we play the game. For the morale, getting to the five box, once per turn we can reroll one resource or raid action. The supply is a little bit different, and it says it here, we can spend one supply to get an extra action. Bearing in mind though, that will creep it down to zero, but it's quite handy if we're rolling bad and we need that extra action to try again, for instance. So this resource management is very, very important. We also have Cunningham. He goes there. And once per epoch, once per deck of cards, we can cancel a cards indicated advance of a single axis front, except for the Africa Corps, who turn up in Epoch 2. There are also DRM markers, dice roll modifier markers, to keep track of what's happening during something called the orders phase. So we get a pile of those, plus on one side, negative on the other, and they go in the holding box. As you can see, certain spaces have this sort of fortification marker and 
this one at the start of the game can have its fortification value, in this case it's two, increased to three, and possibly four, which you'll see is a good thing, but we have to spend an action. So for now that stays in the holding box. Lastly, we have a counter that keeps track of the convoy hits that the Axis score on our convoys. So that goes there for now. We'll see that in action soon. There are some other counters and tokens and things which will bring out as and when the cards tell us to. But for now, all we need to do is to sort out the first deck, the first epoch. And here it is. The first two epoch decks have a red square in the top right hand corner. That's the seeded card. In other words, the card that starts that deck off. So we'll pop that there. The others are shuffled. Now I suppose you could keep them in order and work through the game in a sort of uh, proper timeline, but they suggest you shuffle them. There we are. And that goes on the top. And I think we're ready to start the game. Over in the corner here, you can see a handy sequence of play, which is always great to see, especially for solitaire games. But how do we win or lose? Well, I've mentioned a couple already, and uh, we'll elaborate on that. If at any time the Africa Corps ends up in Cairo, it's an automatic defeat, as it says there. Also, if the Africa Corps are in Alexandria, by the time we get to the sort of housekeeping phase, the end of the turn, we lose as well. If an Axis force manages to get past the fortress into Malta, and they're still there at the end of the housekeeping phase, then Operation Hercules occurs, and if we fail that, we lose. We also lose if all the resources get to zero and stay there once again at the end of the housekeeping phase. How do we win? Well, we've got to get through the three decks, and depending on how well we've done keeping the access at bay, we can get a decisive victory, which they tell us is the historical outcome, we can get a marginal victory or a draw. There is a virtually impossible acclaimed overwhelming victory if we manage to push all the fronts back to their highest box number, or indeed push them off of this into the holding box. But I think if you can do that, you can fold gravy. But we'll see how we go. But just a quick thank you to someone before we start. As the map's quite small and everything is condensed onto it, using my normal dice tower would mean that uh, things might be obscured or I couldn't zoom in. So I've taken a leaf out of Stuka Joe's book, who did an excellent playthrough of this game, and he used one of these mini dice towers. So you can pop that anywhere and not block anything out. So thank you for that idea, Joe. Hope you don't mind me using it. But that does mean I can zoom about all over the map and uh, show you what's going on. Right, here we go. The first thing on the sequence of play, it says the headline phase where we draw the top card. We already know what that is. I'll zoom in on the others, but for now, we'll show you this one, Faith, Hope and Charity. We're gonna get one action. And there's a little bit of historical text, which says, the Italian Air Force launched a series of raids on Malta starting on 11th of June 1940. Uncrated, obsolete gladiator fighters miraculously helped sustain the island's air defence. Swordfish attack planes also arrived from France. The Axis bombings continued upon the Allies' neglected fortress Malta. So that's the headline phase. The next thing is the military phase, which will do that. Then it will be the resources phase. 
and then the Aldous phase. So on the sequence of play, the next thing is the military phase, and it says, move the indicated axis units, shift any markers as indicated, and if this is a red titled convoy card, then conduct a convoy battle. Well, no, it isn't. It'll have a red stripe across the top there. The other thing I use are these little cubes, just to remind me how many actions I got. I know we've only got one, but you know me, I tend to forget things, so I use these little cubes to keep account. So the military phase, here we've got the Italian Air Force who are gonna creep down one space on their track nearer Malta. That's the only thing that occurs there. The next phase is the resources phase, and it says on the sequence of play, adjust the resource markers on their tracks and place any newly arrived fortification units in the holding box. Well, no, we've only got the Malta fortification counter, and here it says resources are none, so none of these are adjusted. And the last thing to do is our orders phase, where we can use our actions, but first we have to apply these DRMs, these dice roll modifiers. And it says a minus two DRM on the Italian Navy and the Italian Army. So we've got up here, we've got those little counters. So we've got a minus two on the Army and a minus two on the Navy which is okay because we don't need to push that back yet. We get a minus one on our morale track if we want to push that back. So it looks like we won't be doing that, but a plus one on the military. Now, as I always say, you will play this completely different, but there aren't many positive DRMs for the uh, military track here. So what I tend to do is try and push that up while I can these aren't dangerous at the moment, he says. So we use our single action and we're going to try and increase our military resource. Now these numbers, in fact on all the counters, tell us what we have to throw in order to be successful. We have to throw higher than the printed number. So normally we'd have to throw five or more, but because of the plus one, we can throw four or more. So wish us luck. Let's see what we do. Two plus one is three, not enough. We have failed. That's all our actions gone. By the way, the other actions we could do, apart from increasing resources, is try and push back, of course, these fronts. We could try and fortify Malta. That's the only fortification counter we've got at this time. Raids are conducted during this phase as well, but that won't happen until the second epoch. If Ultra is in place, we can try and activate that, but that's not there yet. And air support, which is used during convoy battles. So that's all we can do. We now move into the housekeeping phase. And this says, perform the following steps in order. Convoy arrival. No, we don't have a convoy arriving. Defeat or victory? Well, not at the moment. Refresh map. And that means taking off, at this stage, all the DRM markers. So we can remove those and pop them back in the holding box. There we are. And that is the end of the first turn, if you like. And we're ready for the second card. Let's see what we get. Operation Catapult. We are going to get two actions, and the card says, with France defeated, their navy remained a threat in being, as the Axis powers could potentially seize and use it. This was an unacceptable risk to the British. Thus, after an ultimatum and negotiations had failed, the Royal Navy dealt a crippling blow to the French Navy at Meur Air Kabir on the 3rd of July, 1940. Next is the military phase. No military actions, so nothing is moving, but this here doesn't apply. Hopefully in not too distant future, we will get 
the ultra counter, but here it says we have to turn it over so it's not ready. So if it was available, we wouldn't be able to use it this turn. Next is resources, lots going on there, so let's sort that out. So it says minus one supply, oh dear. Also, minus one morale, but only if this card is revealed before card number two, the fall of France. No, it hasn't been revealed. So morale comes down as well. We also get a minus two on the Italian army and a minus one on our morale and the Italian air force. So what are we gonna do? Well, it's telling us, leave the army alone. We could try the military. But that needs a five or a six. Push back the Navy. Let's do that because they're encroaching. We need more than the two. So let's see if we can use one of those actions. and Push the Navy back. Three, that's good enough. Back it goes. Let's try the military, just in case we get a, a good throw. We can worry about the Air Force if it comes forward next turn. So let's do that. We do need a five or six, though, for this to be successful. One. Oh, dear. A natural one is an automatic fail. Natural six, though, is uh, automatic success. But no, that fails. So that's that. We're now in the housekeeping phase, and again at this stage we are just tidying up all the DRM counters and popping them back in the holding box. Time for the next card. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, Operation Hats. This is a convoy battle, that red stripe. Two actions. Uh, the... Navy is moving, and there's our convoy battle. So let's see what this card says. A fast convoy carrying provisions and munitions joined by the Mediterranean fleet sailed to Malta while some escorting British warships bombarded Italian airfields on the island of Rhodes. The delivery of these much needed supplies to Malta, which was so dependent on imports, helped support the valiant war efforts early on. So two actions. So the first thing we do is move down to the military phase. And as I said earlier, the Italian Navy is going to be moving forward. So we'll do that. And then we'll do the convoy battle. Not sure if you can see it here, but it says move the indicated axis units like we did before. So the Italian Navy moves forward. This one doesn't apply, but this one B, battle stations, flip, active axis forces. Everything is flipped except the unit in North Africa. So we'll flip the Air Force and the Navy, excuse me. We can see here some numbers. I'm going to roll a die. And if we roll one of them numbers, they have scored a hit on the convoy. And the sixes in both cases are red. And that means if we throw a six, it's going to be a critical hit. And that unfortunately will be two attack hits on the convoy. Now, if we had ultra at this time, we would be able to activate it and we could use the convoy escort, which says all critical hits those red numbers, are treated as miss results. But no, we haven't got ultra, so let's do this one first. Five, oh dear, that's a hit. Let me turn that back over now. And this one. Three, oh, another hit. These hits will be resolved during the housekeeping phase, but for now we carry on with the next phase in the sequence of play, the resource phase.
This, by the way, where it says to supply question mark is to do with that uh, convoy battle. And that means there are two supplies up for grabs. But as you'll see, we may not get them. But in the resources box, we've got none. So that's good. At least none of our resources are moving down. And then in the orders phase, we've got a minus two on the army, Italian army, but a plus one on the Italian air force, which is good because they're getting a bit near. That goes there. And a plus one on the air force. Don't think there's any point in trying to push back the Italian army. So we'll use one of our actions, I think, to try and push back the Italian Air Force, and it's got a plus one. We could either try and increase the fortification of Malta with the Malta counter there, or try and push back again, because this is a little bit dodgy. One of the resources. While we're having to think about that, let's uh, use an action and try and push back the Italian Air Force. So we need greater than two, but we do have a plus one. Here we go. Three plus one is four, good, they're back. And our last action, let's try and increase the supply because that's right by zero. We tried the military last time, but it, that needs a five or a six. Let's try the supply. So we need a four or more. Four, lovely. So that goes back there. There's nothing else we can do because we're out of actions. So we're into the housekeeping phase. And the first thing we have to do is that convoy. It's arrived at Malta. Let's see how many of those supplies have survived. So we're now using the convoy display. And the convoy is Operation Hats, which is this one. I'll put that there just to remind us. We've got a chance to get two supplies in, and I could have saved one of those actions for convoy air support, which would have given us a minus one DRM on our dice rolls because we're going to roll twice because we've got two hits. But no, I use them on uh, other things. Let's move this up. It's great, this little dice tower. <laughs> so we want them to throw a one or a two Three or a four, we'll lose that supply. Five or a six, that supply. Fingers crossed. Three, oh dear. We've lost a supply. But that does mean if we throw another three or four, we can't lose that one again. Two, that's uh, no loss. So overall, we now get a supply, and that's the convoy arrival done. Oh dear, this is something I normally forget when I'm playing. It says up here, if any part of the convoy arrives, which it did, we've got one, receive, during the housekeeping, one immediate free bonus action with a plus one DRM for morale. This is in addition to all the other DRMs still in play for that turn. Incidentally, if every space in the convoy is lost, it's sunk and we immediately lose one morale. So we get our plus one supply, which is good. And this bonus action, I think up here, not too bad at the moment. i tell you what we'll do. We'll have a try at increasing Malta's fortification. And that means if an Axis force tries to move from their number one box into Malta, they have to get through the fortress. At the moment, they have to throw greater than two, but if we can get that on, they've got to throw four, five, or six. So it's good for us to try that. And for us to be successful as well, we need to throw four, five, or six. Two. No, no good. And we're on to the next card. So the next card is, oh, Fall of France. Ah, excellent. 
The capitulation of France in late June 1940 put Malta in an extremely precarious position. With the removal of the French Navy from the equation, the balance of power theoretically shifted to the Italian Navy, which matched up well, at least on paper, against the British Mediterranean fleet. So, two actions. Let's advance the Italian Navy. Yep, you may have noticed I did forget to remove the DRM markers, but as you can see, that's taken care of. So we have to advance the Italian Navy, which is getting a bit close now. So in the resource phase, minus one morale, oh dear. And if not yet in play, place the ultra marker in the holding box. It is now available for purchase. So here we are. That's handy. That's going in there. And if we purchase it for an action, we can place it in here and use one of these. So moving down to the orders, we've got a minus two on the Italian army. Minus one DRM on morale. And a minus one DRM on the Italian Navy and Air Force. Don't like this one. So what to do? Well, we could fire up Ultra and we can place it in that box ready to use. Let's have a quick look at that box. So we spend an action, place the Ultra in the readiness box and roll a die to see if counterintelligence has foiled it. If we roll a one, it goes back into the holding box. But if not, we can use it for one of these two things. Of course, we can't use it for that. We could have done with that last turn, but we can do this. And that lets us look at the next event card and give us a plus one DRM to any axis front. Or if we do a raid in the next epoch, a plus one for that. But we can't use that plus one for resources, which is a shame. I think we will use it because we've got that minus one DRM on the Italian Navy, which is a bit close for comfort. And a plus one DRM on that will, of course, cancel out that minus one they've got at the moment. OK, let's do that. So we use an action. We pop the ultra counter in the box here and we roll a die and we don't want to get a one because that means they scuppered our attempts at some intelligence. Oh, two, that's lucky. So we can now sort of use it for this. So we reveal the next card and it is Operation Compass. We're gonna get two actions. Oh, the army, the Italian army are going to retreat. Now it's got Luftwaffe here, but they're not on the uh, map yet. So they won't be doing anything. There are cards which say place the Luftwaffe on its track. Uh, so that would apply then, but it doesn't now. We're going to get a plus one supply and a plus one morale. Minus one DRM for military and plus one for supply. So not too bad. We'll read the uh, historical background when we play it. So that's the revealed card. We are now going to place a plus one DRM marker on here. Well, that's going to cancel that out then. Pop that back. And for our second action, we're going to try and push the Italian Navy back away from their Space One because they are very close. So we need a three or more. Five, lovely. That goes back into the holding box. And that's the end of the orders phase. It's housekeeping now. So now we're going to remove the markers. Nothing else applies in the housekeeping phase. So 
So back they go. And I think we'll just do this revealed card and then we'll call it a day because it's gone on a bit. So we've got Operation Compass. Let's have a look at that card. So we're going to get two actions. And it says O'Connor's December offensive was only intended as a spoiling attack, but it exposed Italian weaknesses and the British rapidly advanced across 500 miles of desert, capturing Tobruk in the process. The Italian 10th Army surrendered after the disaster at Bedafom, 7th of February 1941, but then the British campaign stalled. So as I said earlier, even though it's got the Luftwaffe here to advance, they haven't been placed on the map yet. There are specific cards which will do that, but the Italian army retreats. So back go the Italian army, leaving Tobruk. The resource phase is plus one supply and plus one morale. Excellent. We've got some actions now to use in case, but we get a minus one DRM for military. And that's still dangerously low, of course, but a plus one on the supply. I'm quite worried about the military resources, but I'm also looking here. This hasn't got a minus two on it as it normally has. So we might try and push back the army a bit further to El Aguila. So let's try that. We need three or more. Oh, one automatic fail. Let's do it again. Still no luck. What do we do? Do we try and use an action? I want to try and get these as far back as possible because in the second epoch, that turns into the Africa core. So the further back they are, the better. Okay, let's try it once more. We're gonna use a supply. Come on. That's better. Back to El Hagila they go. Do you know what, I'm gonna take a chance. I know it's a minus one. We need a five or a six, but I'm quite worried about that because if it goes back, Two zero. We can only do one attack. Hmm. Well, let's try once. Let's move that down and see if our luck holds. Come on. Oh, no. Okay, we're going to leave it there. We just have to hope the military doesn't drop down on the next card. I could have used Ultra to see the next card, but let's take a chance. But all there is to do now is the housekeeping phase and we'll tidy up. DRM markers. And I think we'll leave it there. And in the next videos, it'll go a bit faster because we all now know what's going on. But I hope you enjoyed that and you found it interesting. And if you did and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel because it really does help. Pushing the like button of the video, the thumbs up, helps as well. And if you want to be informed of other content, well, make sure you push the bell. Leave a comment. As I've always said, my videos aren't reviews. They're me playing the game, having fun and seeing if you like it or not. Mind you, sometimes my, uh, my enthusiasm for the game does uh, bleed through, so to speak. But what do you think? I know States of Siege games aren't everybody's cup of tea, but let me know, because I love to read them. Thanks, as always, to my subscribers. Thank you very much. By the way, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee. Details of that are in the description below or you can click on the Super Chat button now. 
and that helps to maintain the channel and enabling it to continue to upload new content. So if you wish to do that, thank you very much. So I wonder what will happen next time. As I say, we should be able to sort of truck along a little bit faster and it looks okay at the moment, but I'll tell you now, this will heat up very quickly, especially when we get into the later Epoch decks. So I hope you can join me for that. So until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.